Throughout the world, we see similarities in creatures that live on isolated parts of the world from each other. On the continents of Africa, South America, and Australia, we see flightless birds, like ostriches, rhesuses, and emus, respectively. How can these animals cross such vast distances of water if they have no means of moving through the air or effectively crossing large bodies of water? Similarly, we see plants like tulip trees and skunk cabbages who occur in both China and the eastern United States, but do not occur in the lands in between. How can such similar organisms separated by enormous distances, often across bodies of water, be in seemingly opposite sides of the world? In his book, Origin of Species, Charles Darwin put forward an explanation, speciation due to dispersion, although he wasn't fully correct because he didn't have the whole picture at the time. There have been many theories and hypotheses trying to explain why species are distributed the way they are. Early theologians tried to connect animals' dispersions to Noah's Ark. However, they were not able to explain how the giant earthworm got to Australia, or how a ship massive enough to hold every species on Earth and provisions such as water and food for them all could be built. Then, Louise Aziz asserted that multiple creations happened all over the world. He hypothesized that animals were immutable and static, meaning they would stay near their origins of creation. However, while on his voyage, Darwin found fossilized seashells in the high peaks of the Andes, proving that animals didn't stay near their origins of creations. Later, Biologists said that land bridges connected all the world's continents, but could never prove their claims. It was Charles Darwin that theorized that if animals had a means of moving over where water currently is, and were blocked from returning to their place of origin, then speciation through dispersion would occur in these animals. Though he had no notion of continental drift, his theory proved to be correct to an extent. No doubt that if he knew of, of continental drift, he would have had the perfect answer as to why we see flying squirrels in the Americas and in Australia. While we see similar creatures on different continents with explanations on how they got there, we do not know how animals got onto isolated volcanic islands in the middle of large oceans. These islands have endemic and highly specialized species of birds, insects, and plants, but completely lack amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. Why is it that we see some types of organisms on these islands, but other niches absent altogether? Islands, like the Hawaiian Islands, lack many forms of mammals and were completely devoid of reptiles and amphibians before discovery by outside civilizations. Why is that? This presentation will explain some of the processes that happen when similar animals are found on different continents and why islands have such peculiar populations. Continents Observations, Convergent Evolution, and Gondwana. Observations, Cacti and Euphorbs. Cacti and Euphorbs are two different species of desert plants. Cacti are native to North and South America. The Euphorbs are desert plants native to Asia, Australia, and Africa. Both species of plants show an adaptive combination of traits like large fleshy stems to store water, spines to protect themselves against predators, and small or non-existing leaves to reduce water loss. Not to mention that both species are capable of living in the habitat of the other. A similar observation is that of placentals and mammals. Marsupials, mainly found in Australia, and placentals, which are dominant everywhere else in the planet, are both mammals, differing mainly on the reproductive system. Marsupials don't have placentas and give birth to very underdeveloped young, as opposed to placentals, as the name says, come with the placenta and give birth to more developed young. Besides this difference, several species of placentas resemble the many species of marsupials that exist. How is it possible for different species with similar characteristics to be found in separate but similar habitats? The answer is convergent evolution. Convergent evolution explains that species that live in similar habitats, like the cacti and euphorbs, or the marsupials and placentas, will experience similar selection pressure from their environment, so they may evolve similar adaptations coming to look and behave very much alike, even though they are unrelated. Some components of convergent evolution are common ancestry, speciation, and natural selection. 
Other observations related to the distribution of species are that of the distribution of flightless birds, like the ostrich, emu, and rhea, which are found in three different continents. Or plants like the glossopteris, which fossils are found in parts of Africa, America, Antarctica, India, and Australia. How is this possible if the species are not capable of crossing large masses of water? Gondwana. Gowanda was a supercontinent, mostly formed by South America, Africa, Australia, and Antarctica. This supercontinent explained the similarities amongst different species and how it is possible for these species to be distributed in what are now different continents. In conclusion, it was not just a dispersal from continent to continent, but also the splitting of continents and how they took the species with them. Islands Continental islands, oceanic islands, evolutionary significance. Big questions. Why are there different life forms on different types of islands? Why are oceanic islands missing large groups of species? Why do oceanic islands have such unbalanced biotas? How do these observed patterns support the theory of evolution? Continental islands. Definition. Landmass that broke off from a continent and became its own island. Examples of continental islands, Japan, the British Isles, and Madagascar. Species on continental islands mostly identical to the mainland they broke off from, because they broke off with mostly all their species already intact. Oceanic Islands Definition Islands formed mainly by volcanic activity, but were never part of a continent. Examples of oceanic islands, Hawaii, Iceland, and the Galapagos. Main type of life, birds, small plants, insects, arthropods, and some aquatic mammals. Here we find an abundance of these organisms and many similar species of each kind, which is called radiation. Missing, land mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and freshwater fish. These species are not found on oceanic islands because it is too hard for them to cross a vast ocean to get there. On the other hand, the species that are found there are usually small and can float there or can swim or fly to the island, and they are quite often similar, but not identical to the nearest mainland. These patterns are similar in all oceanic islands. Evolutionary significance. How can these major differences between continental and oceanic islands be explained? With evolution, of course. Species found on oceanic islands are descendants of those that usually came from nearby continents in the rare case of long-distance dispersal. But remember, even though long-distance dispersal is rare, the Earth is billions of years old, so all those rare cases have accumulated to create the large amount of species found on oceanic islands today. Continental species are mainly identical to the continent they broke off from. From these observations, we can expect very old continental islands that broke off from their mainland to be a mixture of both, which is what we found to be true. Like in the case of Madagascar, New Zealand, that broke off from their continents more than 85 million years ago. They each have several organisms that went through radiation and they are closely related to the species found on the mainland of Africa from Madagascar and Australia from New Zealand. New Zealand even has some of the imbalance of oceanic islands, with few native reptiles, amphibians, and mammals. The patterns of life found on these islands strongly support the theory of evolution through the events of dispersal, radiation, and speciation that occur on each type of island. The distribution of life depends on chance and lawfulness. Chance because the dispersal of plants and animals are random, that depend on winds, currents, and opportunity to colonize. Like the finches that arrived in the Galapagos Islands, got marooned and thrived on the island. If that had not happened, the ecosystem there would be very different. That is called the Rubison Crusoe effect, which states that time and chance determine who gets marooned on the island. Lawfulness is because according to evolutional theory, it is predicted that plants and animals will evolve and thrive in new unoccupied habitats, forming new species and filling up ecological niches. This evolution results in similar relatives being found on nearby islands. For example, the various types of finches in the Galapagos Islands studied by Darwin all came from a common ancestor, which evolved and thrived differently depending on their habitat. Biological Conservations 
Animals and plants that adapt on an island lack the diversity and ecosystems established on continents. Species that live elsewhere are possible competitors, predators, and parasites. Hence, their ecosystems are fragile to foreign invaders. These species aren't good at coexisting with potential opponents. Overseas, invaders can destroy habitats and species, most destructive being humans. Many unique species on islands have already become extinct because of humans, as they bring other animals along with them, as well as disease. Humans destroy forests and hunt. Due to human activity, many plants and animals continue to suffer a dramatic decline in their population. Each species represents millions of years of evolution, and once gone can never be brought back, which is huge when it comes down to its evolutionary history. Let's get down to business to define mammals. Did they send me guy goats when I asked for mammals? You're a slimy, pale, pathetic lot, and you haven't got a clue. Mr. I'll make a mammal out of you.